Well, uh, Jim, welcome to Calgary and uh, WRLA. Thank you. Uh, tell me what brings you to, uh, to Calgary today? Uh, Owens Corning. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, you recently came from Vegas. You had another trade show. Yes. Why are shows like this important for the industry? Well, I think, you know, for, for the suppliers and, uh, and for contractors, builders, all of us, to see the latest and greatest in technology now, like the new stuff coming, you know, coming, uh, coming this year, um, keeps us informed with with um, with what's happening. Because a lot of times we don't get, you know, we're too busy doing our job, we don't really get to see what is going on and what's coming up in another year or two years. So you know, we're not even prepared for it. Or sometimes it just even goes by us, and we lose, you know, we miss out on everything. So no, these things are these things are great. It's good. To, uh, it's, it's a ton of knowledge. Uh, you know, it's innovation, technology. It's it's all here. So you, you talk about innovation and technology. You're kind of a traditionalist when it comes to some of your design and the way you, you plan things. Is there anything that you've seen back in the day that's coming back into style, back into trend? Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, I I, I build traditional. Um, that's kind of what I'm known for. Um, but you. I don't know if anything's coming back. I don't think traditions ever left. We have a lot of contemporary and modern happening now, you know, just with the generations, that's what they want. But we're seeing a lot now of, of the mix of traditional and contemporary. So you're starting to see it more and more. You know, you may have a, like a Georgian style brick house, but then you'll have the really, you know, thin mullions and everything else and, um, and uh, on, on the windows. So it gives you that kind of contemporary look. And then when you get inside, it's not all trimmed out like a traditional house would be. It's more clean lines. So you see more and more of that now mixing. mixing in, uh, Excellent. Uh, you've hosted TV shows. You've edited magazines. <laughs> you've been a boss builder. What's harder, uh, leading a bunch of contractors or hosting a television show? None of those. Dealing with the homeowner. <laughs> And dealing with the sub trades and the contractors, it's um, you know I don't know everybody you know you watch TV and it looks real easy and da 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 you know it's not you're you're managing expectations. My three words are it's time, money, and emotion. You mix those three together, you don't know what you're going to get. Could be a disaster, it may not be a disaster, but those three. Uh, What's the number one thing a contractor, uh, when it comes to suppliers, what do you think that a contractor should look for when they come to a show like this and they're going to talk to a supplier? When it comes to a supplier, well, this is what I look for. And most of the guys that I know that are contractors in the business is what we look for. Um, not only loyal, I mean, we're going to be loyal to the supplier, then I would like the service back. I'm really not, I am concerned about what it's going to cost but I'm more concerned about the relationship. And, you know, if I'm gonna save $4 over here, I'm not going over here. I'm gonna pay the extra $4, stick with these guys, because you know, when I need something or something goes wrong, they're there to help us fix it, deal with it. That's, that's what we look for. That's what contractors look, look for at a supplier's like any of these big guys. That's what they, they should be offering the contractors. It's a service, you know, Again, like it all comes down to the innovation technology, like keep us, uh, you know, on on track with everything. But the biggest thing to me is how you service me. Right? I'm bringing you business. So when we talk about people who aren't here for this show, like what are they missing out on? Why would a guy, a contractor who isn't attending the show right now, why should he be here? Well, he's going to miss out on everything that's happening. He's going to miss out on again innovation, technology, you know, his competitors that are here are going to have that much more on, to, you know, on him now that they're, they're that much further ahead than he is. Like it's, it's a no brainer. You got to come to these. I'm not saying you come to everyone because a lot of them are repetitive, but you have to come to a couple, at least once a year, just to see what's happening. Like just, I just came back from Vegas. I tell you, I mean, I, you know, I'm pretty much old school about with technology and you know, how we do our estimates and everything else. Man, I have my eyes opened up, and you know, so we're changing our, you know, way of, of doing things now too. Just in the in the tech world, and because I'm not, I'm pen to paper guy, right? That's the way I am. 
So, so you just came back from Vegas. You literally just stepped on the showroom of RWRLA. <laughs> yeah. But tell me about an innovative product maybe that caught your eye. Well, you uh, so the thing that caught my eye the most was just the, um, oh, the software. That's like, to me, again, I'm not a software guy. Like this is all kind of, I can barely use a cell phone. Kidding, but you know, um, but the software technology now that's out there is unbelievable. And that's kind of what we, I mean, we went down for other reasons, but that's caught our eye. And, and that's where we're gonna, you know, we picked up on a, two or three of the suppliers, I guess, of software. So we're gonna look into, you know, one of them for sure. I mean, it's amazing the time you can save and, you know, we can be out on the job or getting more jobs. Uh, Jim, tell me, tell me more about your uh, Reynolds for Heroes program. What, uh, what, what is the program all about? If I'm a first time, uh, first time I've heard about it, tell me about it. So the Reynolds for Hero program is, we started about five years ago. And what it is, we're, we basically bridge the gap between you know, the government and uh, what the government does for the soldiers that have come back that have, have lost limbs, right? So, I mean, they're, they only get X amount of dollars. And you know, sometimes it doesn't cover what they have to do to uh, redo their house so that you know they can get around. So we'll step in, and we'll bridge that gap and do whatever. If you know, if he needs an extra bathroom, or if he, you know, if they ran out of money and they couldn't do a deck, you know, a deck with ramps, we'll do that. Whatever it is they need, that's what we will do. So it's, I mean, it's it's been, it's been great. Um, I mean, the toughest thing in this whole. You know, thing with the soldiers is they don't come forward. They're too proud, right? So, you know, we we, we deal with the uh, the military. They tell us who needs help, and then we, you know, we go. But they're so proud, right? I mean, it's and I mean, really, they're putting their lives on the line. I always say that, you know, what they're basically signing you a, bla a blank check when they go over. Hey, you know what? They know. I mean, we've talked to so many of them. They know they have. They're coming back one of three ways whole, part, or in a box. I mean, as blunt as I can be, that's what it is. And you know what, and they come back, and if they need us, it's the least we can do. They served us, it's our time to serve them, right? 